Okay. Kartik 179. He's played E4. What do we feel like? Wow. Just out of respect for two separate people. And then maybe even a third if you count LeBrad James suggesting B6. All right, we'll do one game like this. The Owens. Certainly not a top tier opening. Has some poison to it for sure. But not a top tier opening because obviously you're handing the entire center to your opponent. But it works really nicely against lower rated players because lower rated players will just make the obvious moves, right? They'll put their two pawns in the center. They'll put their two knights out to the basic squares. They'll click their heels and feel good about themselves. So we're pinning the knight. That actually means we're attacking this pawn. That doesn't always register for people. Bishop d2 you see all the time. Like, oh, you're attacking this? Let me defend it. Right? It's like, no, I'm not attacking this. I'm attacking this. And we've already won a pawn on move six. It happens that quickly. Right? Already we can say the entire point of the opening has been fulfilled. If d5, as you can see, there's a pretty serious threat on our g7 pawn, so d5 will just respond with knight f6. So as soon as we play bishop b4, white has to realize, uh uh uh, it's not the knight that's attacked. It's the e4 pawn, so bishop d3, probably the best move. But when you play this opening, I don't think you can expect or hope for much more in terms of an advantage for black than this. He's in the think tank now. He was playing immediately. All of a sudden, now he's thinking. All right, bishop e2. My moves are remarkably easy because they're going to be the exact same no matter what. Knight f6, d6, knight bd7, castle. Probably this bishop will retreat back to b7. B3, okay, let's continue. Why not D5 immediately? By who? D5 by me, I would never, ever, ever play. I want my pawns on dark squares. H6, these pawns. As soon as I put my pawns on light squares, then my dark squares become super weak. I only have a light squared bishop. Knight d5, a little bit one-dimensional for me. Bishop for cheats, c4 happens. I'm not in a rush to try to like play moves like this. Okay, knight here has really got me thinking about bishop takes g2. You really got me thinking here. I mean, <laughs> it looks pretty nice, not gonna lie. It could be safer to just not take it, but 
I mean, it's very hard to say no to. Sure. I'll take on G2. Obviously, we can anticipate our opponent's move, Rook G1. And then I think it's time to take this, this individual and put it back on B7. You know, the one thing I'm thinking is, instead of putting it back here, because the reaction is going to be Bishop F3. If my opponent is uh, worth his salt, he's going to play Bishop F3. So... What I'm thinking is to play bishop d5 just so that the bishop's on a square where it's defended. Even though later on I'll have to waste time moving it again, I think just playing bishop here and dealing with bishop f3 is annoying enough that I don't think I actually want to do it. So perhaps this move makes no sense, but I'm going to play bishop d5. But really, I would like to play bishop b7. I just wasn't sure about bishop f3. want a castle queen side uh kind of depends i know my opponent does so yeah in that sense i'd like to maybe match sort of his energy where he's going but we have some time here so h6 definitely want to play knight moves and then knight e4 and then take the bishop that all looks like that all looks like a really good uh really good way to play h6 Knight f3, knight e4, queen e3, let's say. Knight takes, queen takes, and in that position, my g pawn is hanging. So, what do we do about that? I feel like we might need to kingside castle there. And it's like, yeah, we are scared of the uh, g file, I'm not gonna lie, but maybe g6. Let's go here. Knight f3 here. Let's take. And then honestly, g6. Don't look pretty, but it'll get the job done. Takes dark square bishop's quite strong here. I don't want him to keep it and play that. So let's take. Queen takes, and I think the move we want is g6. Queen f6, queen takes c7. Maybe that's playable. And then castle or something. That could be the, the case. But that, uh, <laughs> it's a little much. It's a little much. Yeah, the knight's hanging, but I also have to put up with this queen c8 check, so just have to be sure. It's actually working, which I'm not sure about. I don't know if I can trust that line. Probably just g6, or maybe g5 is slightly more aggressive. Hmm. Yeah, this move doesn't make the best impression, but at the end of the day, it keeps everything defended. So, 
I'll play g6. My next intended couple moves might be like knight d7, knight 6 for example, or at least knight d7. So even though we're up material here, now it's two pawns, we're still not completely out of the woods. Hey, someone just re-upped to chess.com platinum membership using our link, our premium link, our affiliate link. Thank you, buddy. Few people were asking about that earlier in the stream as well. Very considerate of you. We do, Tapir, yeah. We want to make safe trades here if possible. Queens specifically, that would be the best possible trade. But I would still be apprehensive about making a trade like that because of all my weak light squares that will result. But in general, bishop for bishop or knight for knight here, I would be interested in trading. And especially getting the queens off the board. Was castling bad? It was a good move. It defended things. It's probably the objective best move. But I just thought to myself, eh, do I want to deal with castle, rook g3, rook g1? It just seemed like pressure that I'd rather not put up with. Okay, this doesn't have a direct threat here, but I'm pretty sure the point is to play c4. That's fine. That's fine. Knight d7, c4, bishop b7, rook g6. Just have to check things like this. I think, uh, I think for the most part it's okay there. But those are the things to, uh, to watch out for. Oh, it doesn't even play c4. It plays knight here. Making me wonder if bishop to f3 is the move. Queen h4 with some queen takes h2 ideas. I do want to just get castled queenside here. I think all my problems would be uh, would be solved. I was able to castle queenside. So knight f6 or queen h4. Queen e7, queen f6 are also, also moves here for black. Basically, like, a queen move feels natural because it gets me closer to castling. I mean, of course it's going to feel natural. So, I think I'm going to play queen e7. Because I'm thinking if bishop here takes, queen takes, I can actually just play d5 in castle. d5 will make, uh, will make a lot of sense because it kills a couple squares that his knight might want to use. And it blocks this diagonal. So... C4, though, will still take a step back. And then if bishop here, we can castle. Defend our bishop, and then we should be completely okay. I also like that this deals with uh, the pin on the e-pawn. Yep, 
Nice move. Let's retreat this bishop. I have every single one of my pawns. Very solid. So, again, bishop here, I think I'll castle. Really expecting this move. But there's almost nothing that will stop me from castling. Like it might be a temporary thing, but I am long castling here. The reason I feel safer long castling is, yeah, my opponent can launch an attack, but... I'm going to start to open things in the middle if the king stays there. So it's clearly not castling this way. You can castle that way, but even that doesn't look so safe anymore. Once I get my king to safety, we just need to open some lines. The most guaranteed way to open the position is definitely d5, because my opponent can't really sidestep it, whereas e5, technically we could see d5. I like that position for me, but it does keep it closed. So some, some combination of challenging these pawns, d5, c5, I, I think. e5 looks nice, but might be just a longer game to win after pawn d5. Yeah, but if white doesn't play bishop f3 here, then I'm not sure what he's up to. He might play like a4, try to play a4, a5. f4 is a reasonable move as well. I think we've done enough. It's time to castle. Time to castle. Soon as things open up, it'll benefit me. That's a guarantee. respect how much time he's uh, taking per move here and although this move looks a little bit crazy it's probably justified but we need to open some lines we need to open some lines so how are we going to do it Yeah, e5 will always be a always be a very very good option here because clearly it's going to open something um so i'm a fan of e5 the reason that i like e5 so much is although it looks like i'm pinned i'm actually threatening queen check and then i can take the pawn so 
e5 is a move that I can play confidently here. So I'm not really pinned because of uh, because of queen h4 check, and it does make sense to open the line directly pointing at the king. I think the main argument for e5 is that I mean it's got it's attacking two things. So moves like d5, which were previously interesting, after b4 are absolutely not. d5 c5, and I actually start to get a little nervous as black. But an open position will result in tactics that work. That's 100% going to be true. This kind of looks like a Dutch, but without f5. You know the Dutch is d4, f5, right? This kind of looks like the Dutch, but not the Dutch. It's like looking at a horse. Really looks like a zebra, but without the black and white stripes. <laughs> Take. Yeah, we're threatening this. And we're also threatening that. So I like the, uh, I like the pressure on both sides here. Hey, you're not wrong, CD. You're not wrong. This guy is going to be feeling the hurt. There's nothing that White can do now to keep things closed. It's going to be wide open. Black's pieces are going to be feasting. Takes, we can take back. Threading knight d3 check, winning the queen. These threats still exist. So d5 doesn't really close things down that well. We win that pawn, and white is also running out of pawns here. But there's a difference, uh, Edwig, between... Like, if white had all their pawns, maybe I would still go e5, but maybe not. The, the point of e5 is that it was definitely going to open some lines. I would do this even if it, like, cost me a pawn, because I'm, up, I'm ahead two pawns. So when you're up two pawns, it's a little easier to open things up, because you can do it with a bit more authority. Because you don't really have as much to lose. But if the material is equal, you do have to pick your break, your pawn breaks a little more carefully. Because if you lose a pawn, suddenly you might be at a disadvantage. But if I'm up two pawns, like I can even sack a pawn to open the position and probably be way ahead of my opponent. Rook g4 for white. Uh, optimistic at best, I would say. Knight f6 is available. Queen takes pawns available, but it's hard to recommend a move for white, so it's not the worst suggestion. Yeah, castle long and pray, honestly, that might be the move here.
e5. So he saves his b pawn. Very fair. Um, what we have been intending the whole time is this check, which wins this pawn. And that's the reason that this position is so nasty, is there was no way that, that he could truly avoid the loss of material. Check. I could take with the queen, but I feel like leaving queens on the board with the king in the middle makes a ton of sense. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I would like my position more if this pawn was gone. And I really mean that. White's king will be in serious trouble if these two rooks were just staring right down the board. It's my own pawn in the way that it prob probably means that he can last a little longer. So even though he's down a lot of pawns, he might want to offer a queen trade here. It's a really unpleasant thought to play like, you know, queen d3 just gets killed with knight c5. So yeah, I think that that really is the, the right thing to do. And it's tough because for black, it, I mean, I can't really say no. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm up three pawns and I have better developments. So of course, I'll be, I'll be interested in this. Okay, if the king moves now, we have rook takes bishop. Bishop d3 looks so natural, and I'll probably follow up with rook e3, and then knight to e5 or c5. It is nice to see the opponent using the clock, though. I'm not going to lie. He's going to have to play faster than he's been playing because now he's down to his last minute. Bishop g4 also gets hit with f5 pretty naturally. So I was planning to go rook here. I thought this was reasonable. We could also bring the knight in first to c5 and then go rook here. It's an option too. Not sure it really matters. The only thing I'm not sure about is knight f1. So maybe this one first. But I think rook e3 here is a very big, big move. This will lose material, so you really can't take it. And knight takes d3 is a, a free piece for me. So he needs an answer here. It's a rather uncomfortable spot. Seems weird to pick and choose from here, but if I take he has king d4, feels like he starts to run away a little bit. So I'm going to throw this check in and then take. Just to force him 
over to the queen side. GG. A5 takes C5 was my, uh, my intention. Now it's just time to push pawns to win, exactly. But from the opening, it was just, uh, it was literally like, this is what you can expect from, you know, 1,000. Uh, bishop b4, it looks like we're attacking the knight. I mean, of course we are, but we're really threatening the pawn. Because remember, the only reason I can't win the pawn right now is because of the knight. So if I'm attacking the knight, I'm indirectly attacking the pawn. So many people just play bishop d2, and you win this pawn so easily. And your setup is just like this. But he offered me another pawn here, so I just, you know, I had to take it. Yeah, and once we got our king to safety, position is overwhelming for black, but you won't be able to tell how good it is until you open some lines. So we needed to play e5, and then all the, all the pieces, all the pawns started uh, working, working for us. But all you need is a pawn break here. g5 would work, c5 would work, e5 would work. You need to challenge some of these advanced pawns for white.